everybody. My name is Alandis Dobbins, uh, the director of MORE. MORE is the Memphis Office of Resources and Enterprise. Uh, it's an office that was started by Mia Wharton uh, three years and nine months or so ago, almost 10 months ago. And our primary purpose is to help provide resources for minority and women-owned businesses and local-owned businesses here in our city. Uh, and so we do that in a uh, lot of ways, uh, but today's way we're going to do that is through the Power Series that we just started this year. Uh, the Power Series is a series of workshops that we do every month. This month we're focusing on culinary arts. Last month we focused on bidding with the city of Memphis and we had the directors come out and meet small business owners so they could find out how you bid with the city of Memphis on different city contracts. Uh, so next month will be cash in your passion, which is how do you start your business business 101. We'll take you through the steps to be able to do that. And so we do these workshops on an ongoing basis, real intimate time, real personal time. You get to meet with experts and meet with people who are successful in our community and learn how to grow your business step by step by step. And so we do that. We like it to be intimate and small so that you can ask all the questions that you need and not be in a big, huge space and it's, you know, 400 people and you don't get to get your questions. We like to keep this intimate. And so little by little, we're affecting our economy by making sure that our small businesses and our local owned businesses are successful. And so welcome to our power series. Uh, I just told you the next two that are coming up, which will be in October and November uh, to help finish out this year. And then in April, of 2016, we'll be doing our Boom Conference, which is our huge event for the year. It's called Businesses Open for Opportunities in Memphis. Uh, last year we held it, and we'll be holding it again this year at the Sheraton downtown, the new Sheraton, and uh, we had probably 400 small business owners that came. We had speakers that came in from out of town, <coughs> successful business people, local, to tell us how they grew their businesses. And so be on the lookout for that as well. Uh, because um, what we try to do again is just to make sure that our small business owners and our business owners in Memphis have everything they need so that they can really be successful. Today we've got our resources in the back. We try to always provide in all of our workshops the ability to find financing because access to capital seeming is always one of the toughest things to do when you're starting your business. Uh, I am a prior business owner, I've been through those steps before, and most of the people that we interact with, access to capital is huge. Technical assistance is huge, so we're assisting with that too. Again, that's why we do these workshops, teaching you the ins and outs, knowing the successful things that have happened, and we don't just focus on the success, we focus on the failures too, because you can learn from that. Um, the statistic is, 80% of businesses that start don't do well, but the small business owner here in Memphis, we're gonna turn that around and give you a higher probability of, su of success. And so that's part of the reason that we do everything we do. We have our website, morememphis.org. It also has access to all of the resources that we found here in our city uh, in one space, one place for you to go to. If you need to know how to do a business plan, we go to one of our access partners. <clears throat> if you need to learn about certification, again, uh, doing business with the city of Memphis, we have our office, our, our sister organization, Office of Contract Compliance there. Uh, and there's a portion on your agenda where you can really go and sit and talk with our resources. And Leslie's gonna introduce those resources to you uh, in a moment, our chambers here, so on and so forth. And so, just wanted to take a moment, let you know who we are, why we're here. We're extremely excited. We're a small office, but we're very mighty and we're very passionate about making sure that our local businesses, particularly our, particularly our women and minority-owned businesses, are able to do very well and prosper, hire more people, grow our city, and really make Memphis the true gem and the true city that we are grooming and growing ourselves into right now. Maybe we can grow more businesses, and hire some of these young people and keep them off the street from doing all the crime. So that's our vision, that's our hope here. And so we want you to be truly successful. Help to share the word about what we do here at MORE. Uh, because we're small, we don't have a budget to advertise. It's all word of mouth. So share with people, your family, your friends, your church members, 
everybody in the community, your network, what we do, because the more people that know about the resources, the more success we can have in our community. So without further ado, I will bring up. I'm over here. <laughs> I'm going to bring up our sponsor presentation. We appreciate Nicole so much for allowing us to be here, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Thank you for coming. Welcome, welcome again. Yeah. I'd like to thank More Memphis for uh, holding this and allowing you guys all to come out. Uh, I appreciate uh, those of you that are going to get into the food service industry. I tell my students all the time I appreciate what they do here in the city of Memphis and trying to make it a better place. Uh, I've been an instructor here at La Cole Culinaire for about five and a half years, going on six in January. I went to culinary school down in Orlando. I am from Memphis, uh, left went off to college. I cooked everywhere from Tampa to Orlando, up to Boston, out to California, San Diego, uh, San Francisco, Napa Valley. And uh, it came a time I had been gone for about nine years-ish, eight, nine years. Uh, I wanted to come home and see my family, be around my uh, nieces, my brothers, uncles, and mom and dad and stuff like that but I wanted to bring back to my community everything that I have learned out in the industry and bring it back to Memphis because I love this place and a lot of my friends uh, that stayed here go why do you come back here why are you doing this here you know and I said because I love this place I love the people I love the community I love the buildings I love the streets I love the trees in the middle of the road I love it all I like the trolley tracks they got a trolley on I love every single day okay but what I try to bring back to my students here is let them know hey man the industry here in the city of Memphis, the food service industry in the city of Memphis is only getting better and better and better and better. And we have built the food service industry, whether you like it or not, for the entire United States. I want you to think about some of the foods that you've seen from coast to coast. They do what we do, and they don't do it as well as what we do here, okay? And we are growing this industry, okay? It's getting bigger and bigger and better. And so I tell you, those of you that decide that you want to get into the food service industry, there's a few things that you have to remember to be able to do this, okay? You have to be passionate about what you do. And I know we throw that word around all over the place. My students tell me all the time, Chef, I'm passionate about what I do. I want to cook for the rest of my life, man. Passionate to me means I'm in love with what I do. And if you've ever been in love, you know you can't live without it. An undying love for what we do. And not so much what I like. It's what y'all like. We've all cooked for other people, I assume. Y'all cook for other people? Yeah. It is my favorite thing in the entire world. I will eat ramen and bologna sandwiches, okay? <laughs> but I will cook you beef bourguignon. I will cook you beautiful fish tacos, okay? Yeah. And I will go home and eat my bologna sandwich and Pringles, okay? <laughs> I love what you love. I want you to be happy. I like those smiles on your faces, okay? I personally run the food truck here at the culinary school. I have taught everything from uh, serve safe management uh, to manage first programs here, nutrition programs, basic knife cuts and sauces, to fabricating entire animals, to nutrition classes, to running the restaurant front of the house and back of the house here. And quite honestly, for the past six months, I've been running the food truck, and I love getting out there and seeing my fellow citizens, okay? Watching them eat new things, getting away from hamburgers and hot dogs, man, please. No offense to hamburgers and hot dogs and barbecue. We all love it, okay? But I want to give my city something else. I want to put me on the plate, okay? Remember this, that good enough is never good enough. It cannot be, okay? This is a very, very difficult industry to get into, and I know they're going to explain some things to you. We're going to talk about capital and all those kind of things. <clears throat> all of these things, capital, it can be done. My mother did it at 60 years, okay? She quit a job where she was making six figures and said, I'm done. She went and got her a small little loan, opened up a food truck. She runs Millie's Garden, has been for two years now. She's doing very, very well for herself. She outruns me, man. I park up behind mom, and they got a line over at the truck, and they're kind of, what's mom doing over there? You know? And she makes salads. Chicken salad, but she just does, does salads. With simple little vinaigrette, and she makes it all from scratch herself. Chicken salads, tuna salads, um, and then just basic salads, and does them all in a wrap as well. And when she first got out of the industry, people said, why are you doing that, man? These folks don't want that. Because for two, three years, people in the food trucks have been doing things like hamburgers and hot dogs and barbecue. Everybody's seen it before. They know that's what they want. So mom shows up on the scene with the salad, and all of her counterparts are going, oh, man, you ain't going to do nothing. And then she started to feel that way as well. Maybe I didn't make the right choice. Her business wasn't as good as it had to be, but she started getting word of mouth throughout people, man. It was my favorite. Absolutely. Amelia Garden? Mm -hmm. I love her. I'm so proud of mom, man. I can't, I can't say how proud I am of her. 
But she went from <coughs> making fifty hundred dollars a day here and there, struggling, worried about what she was doing, uh, to last week was her first week. She actually made over two thousand dollars in one week, and that is amazing to me. Okay, that is something I want to do for the school as well. Okay, love what you do, love giving to others. That is it. Okay. I like what I do. I like my food. It is much more important for me that you like it. And I tell my students all the time, I can't open up a restaurant serving me. I'm not going to go back there, order the food, prep the food, cook the food, plate the food, and go out and eat it myself and do my dishes and wrap it up at the end of the night and think I'm going to make any money off of it. It's what he likes. It's what you like. You got it? And a lot of times people don't exactly know what they want. You have to show them a lot of times, okay? If you've never had a fish taco, you need to be able to present said fish taco in a way that people can receive it properly, okay? People don't necessarily know sea bass or swordfish. What do they know? Catfish, tilapia, salmon. If I can give you an avenue to present yourself on a plate and you accept what I have, just enough to try it, just enough to try it, and open your mind just a little bit more. It makes your business sale, okay? Very important, you need to be a teacher, okay? You need to be able to show your employees, your colleagues, your uh, customers, a little bit of education. And I said that with the fish taco reference, okay? I need to be able to show my employees what I do. I can't just assume I can throw it all over on myself. I'll try, but I need to be able to take you and you, and you, and bring you in and hold you and say, listen, this is how it's done. This is me. You are performing what I do. You are performing me. You are my business now. And employees are terribly important, okay? They need to be able to take exactly what you do, your passion, your love for your food, and put that same love and passion into it and understand that it is very, very important to them, okay? Not necessarily for job security, but for them inside. I know that when I cook food, I do braised short ribs and I put them on a sandwich and I do some little pickled carrots and onions, okay? This is stuff I grew up around. People say, how do you come up with these menus? This is stuff mom cooked me, man. Ham and cheese sandwich? I can do a ham and cheese sandwich. I'm sure you've had one before. I do it a little bit differently. I make the ham myself. I have those resources, okay? I slice the cheese myself, okay? I let people know that I do these kind of things. I make homemade pastrami. I fabricate the fish and so on, okay? As far as your business is concerned, once you get rolling, there are a few things that are definitely important, man. Organization is paramount. Sanitation is paramount. I urge everybody to get into something like a ServeSafe course. We do teach them here, but you can go online and look up ServeSafe.com. Get on there. Look at those uh, sanitation resources. Take the classes. Become ServeSafe certified. This will keep your truck clean. This will help your employees understand cleanliness is key. If you make one person sick, y'all, we know this word of mouth. I make you sick, you're telling all your friends, I got sick, and that destroys me. The last thing you want is a bad review. You will get them. Hey, I didn't like this, I didn't like that, this happened. That's fine. But if that word of mouth can get out to somebody, I had that short rib sandwich, and it was on point, man. It's the best thing I ever had in my life. Let's go find them and get some more, okay? You got to think about prepping organization space, organizing your kitchens properly, there are uh, resources online to look up proper organization of a kitchen itself. I know these things sound small, but to understand that if I'm working here, cooking here, my food cannot be across the kitchen, okay? I can have a, a refrigerator or a freezer down below me and I can work there, okay? We talk about mise en place, okay? Look it up. You need to know about it. It means everything in its place and a place for everything. And this is something we focus on here at the culinary school. Everything has to have its place. And you have to know where it is all the time. Okay? I tell my students, get in the coolers. Count your items. Organize your items. Stack them. Okay? Be over-organized. Okay? It is completely okay to be a little OCD about your food and your stuff. We count our money. Count your carrots, because that's your money. Count your apples, that's your money. You take the peel off, you pay for that peel. It's in the garbage now. You throw money in the garbage, what can you do with it? You see what I'm saying? So you've got to think about these kind of things. Equipment, as far as equipment goes for restaurants, this is the big thing that goes into restaurants. I always say, don't skimp on the front end of the back end. If you're going to start a bakery, don't skimp on that mixer. That's your lifeblood. 
and don't skimp on that oven. That's the last thing it comes to, okay? You can't go buy and use there, okay? In the middle, mixing bowls, speed racks, maybe not cutting boards, but you can get those used as well. Um, let's see, refrigerators. These kind of things you can buy used, and there are plenty of resources in the city of Memphis for you to buy used equipment. Go online as well. I know Chef Supply on Broad does a lot of used equipment as well, and I speak with them a lot about their used equipment, and they actually will fix it for you as well, okay? Uh, one of the last things, employees, finding the right employees and the right people to work for you, people that are passionate about what they do. And I'm saying, again, in love with what they do. If you're going to be in the food service industry, you've got to, got to love exactly what you do and love to grow and build on what you do. If this is something where you're going, I kind of like it. I think I can do that. I like my bologna sandwich. I think everybody else might like it. No, that's not it. <laughs> I'm going to make bologna and I'm going to kill it out there and I'm going to grab my employees and I'm going to show them how to kill it out there too. And I'm going to bring them up along with me and then they're going to go out and reproduce as well. You see what I'm saying? The same results. I want people to be successful. Okay. <clears throat> Lastly, maintain a focus on yourself, please. You've got to pay yourself in education, passion, love, food. You've got to pay yourself. Okay, guys. Too many times you see people put so much money into the business, so much time into their employees and food and this and this and that, and they forget about themselves and why they got into this industry in the first place. I love this, and I'm not going to let that die. Does that make sense? I spread my love to my students. I stand up in front of them every day and let them know how much I love what I do. I love to cook. I love to teach, and I obviously love to talk. They told me to stop. They said 10 minutes, and I went, oh, Lord, I don't know if I can do that, okay? <laughs> Evolve your goals and write them down, okay? Let yourself know, this is what I am going to do. It is going to happen. You got it? Do you have any questions real quick? No questions? Well, all right. Then I guess I answered them all. Yes, sir? No, the, uh, you talked about the... Uh the self-serve organization? Serve safe. Oh, serve safe. Okay. Serve safe. Uh, does that cover things like typo, first day? First absolutely. Time, like, absolutely. Yeah. Big time. Big time. And uh, likewise, as far as serve safe goes, you can get the certificates. Get your employees to get these certificates as well. This is something that's getting into the industry, and people don't hire people anymore if they don't have that serve safe certification. It's a thing. Y'all have the same resume, but you're serve safe certified. That's where I'm going because I know you know the importance behind something like FIFO or washing your hands. You see? Very, very important sanitation, y'all. Organization. Paramount, man. You've got to do it. The last thing you want is the health department showing up. <clears throat> and going, uh -uh, I don't think so. Okay? I run a mobile kitchen, and they show up my mobile kitchen is the toughest thing, man. I have to take an entire restaurant industry and stuff it into a little space. And I got two other people that have to help me there. And we have to pump out the same thing people do on a Friday night, on a Friday afternoon, in the hot sun, and as quick as I can do it. I don't have five, six hours to pump out food. I have one hour to make my money. Okay? And it can get hectic. And yes, it can get dirty. Okay? You've got to stay on top of that. You don't want to be in the middle of service and you're on number 35. And these lovely young ladies show up and say, hey, it's time to have a talk. With the clipboards, okay? That is a very bad feeling when you ain't ready for it, okay? Sure. This is where something like Serve Safe comes into play because you know what they're going to be looking for. Get those, and I say this, and I don't know if I'm busting anybody out or getting in trouble or anything like that. Take that health department score and use it. I use this in my restaurant, my kitchen, on my truck. I use it as a guideline as to what I need to be doing in the kitchen. And I'll show my students that on the truck as well. This is, this is our health department score. These are the things that were wrong last time. Better not happen again. Fix it. And make them fix it. You ain't got time for them not to fix it. That is it, plain and simple, man. You don't have time because this is your business. And you've got to grow. And if anybody's holding you back, you got to let them go. Sorry. Any more questions? I was only supposed to go for 10 minutes, and I didn't. <laughs> 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 <laughs>